Come on, mister. beauty 69 Camaro LS3 bit of a resto mod build <sighs> pretty fresh build from the looks of it it's like 140 miles on the odometer some nice body mods done no drip rails spoilers Frenched in she got a little dirty on the way over. It's raining all today. Pretty sharp looking car. Can dig door handles. But yeah, she's over here because uh, by the looks of it, it got a startup tune dumped into it, and that was it. It never got uh, dialed in, so working out a few little mechanical issues here. Um, see that the throttle body was double gasketed. There was a paper gasket and a rubber O-ring. Um, I noticed right away on the scanner that it was down at like 5 degrees of timing, so the computer's pulling timing to try and get the idle down to desired so, uh, vacuum leak somewhere. We're in the process of elimination, trying to get the vacuum leaks sorted. Uh, also, it had the it has a catch can there on the PCV, and it had this uh, vent on the port on the valve cover, so it was pulling some air in there, unmetered air. So we got that off and capped, and it's still idling high. So we're looking at this throttle body, comparing it to a factory one. And this is the old deep motor. See that? I think that's our problem right there. The IAC is at zero, and it's still idling too high. for day two of tuning here. Yesterday I just ran it to town to get a baseline log and the results were it was like dangerously lean, like 25% lean the one time I hit it wide open and uh, the transmission was pretty squishy. got a PO1 computer in it. Determined that uh, it's got a stock O2 Camaro LS1 tune in it. And uh, pretty much uh, aside from some strange timing changes that uh, all in all it was O2 Camaro tune on this LS3. So yeah gonna take me about a half hour to get up to the blacktop I don't want to be chipping this thing up run her about five mile an hour the whole way up there 
but uh, we'll see what we can uh, get this fueling dialed in. I did throw some fuel at it right away this morning before I flashed a tune in it. And uh, yeah, see if we can make some power out of this thing. It had about felt like it was about 150 horse yesterday, so we're gonna change that today. I'm back from my little cruise here, and. I chucked a ton of fuel at the tune. I mean, like, way more than it would ever need. Uh, just tuning the math right now. And it's still going super lean and stumbling. Uh, almost feels like a fuel pressure related issue or starvation. So I've popped a plug out on the back of the rail here. And that's a number eight fuel rail. I don't have a fitting to get my gauge in there. So. What I do have is a number eight ORB plug and a number four AN, that's what my fuel pressure gauge is. It's a quarter inch pipe, so I'll drill that out on a lathe and tap her out so I can verify fuel pressure. Pretty light going this morning. <laughs> Anyways, following day, about 9 a.m., waiting for the dew to burn off outside so I can take this black beauty out for a cruise. Got the fitting in the fuel rail, grease gun hose, and uh. Got her zip tied with the wiper here, so we don't scratch anything. Uh, try and see what's going on with the fuel pressure here when you get on it. I'm holding the throttle steady state right now. All those cells were like 15% rich before it started acting up. Now even at idle, it's super lean. Something's going on here. It was just uh, 5 to 10 percent rich across the board, top to bottom. Fuel pressure still good. I don't know, fellas. Now just a couple minutes later here going idling down the gravel road came back rich I didn't do anything no modifiers going uh, I've been keeping an eye on the stoic that isn't moving and I've got the trims disabled so I pulled the intake duct back off here so I could uh, move this radiator shroud back a little bit I put these rubber seals in along the edge here because this car does run kind of warm. There was like a half inch gap between the shroud and the radiator, so I put those uh, foam rubber edge strips in. And I look down the intake tube and I see the math screen is laying here. I wonder if that's not causing my problems. Seems like only when you get after it, it acts up. Maybe that's getting in front of the resistor there and blocking the airflow. That would cut fuel for sure. Well, just got back from another test drive. No improvement. Still popping and banging. And uh, I get a clue though. I had a mass airflow sensor performance code come up. And just comparing these two, I just went and got this one out of the backyard off of a six liter parts truck I've got tucked away back there. See on this metal part, it doesn't say anything. And on the OEM one, it says Delphi there. And uh, looking at the resistors in here, there's three small resistors and 
the IAT sensor there off to the right is really short and compared to this one it's got some big oddball resistor in there and it just looks like a wire on the other two yeah we'll try doing the old switcheroo on these and see if that does it oh well, we got the new throttle body on haven't ran it at all yet I think it's safe to say all these come out of the same factory. Uh, it's just a matter of uh, buying a name brand. It probably has a lot better quality control. And whatever this one is, a deep motor. It's probably the second off the fast line, and so on and so forth. So even if you think you're getting the same thing uh, for less money, it's not always the case. That throttle blade was a lot better fit that uh, should solve my high idle issues completely. Um, since I had it back in here, I also went ahead and threw a 160 degree thermostat in there. Uh, I noticed it ran kind of warm. I did put um, rubber strips in the side of the fan, try to get a little more efficiency out of the fans here. But, uh, it doesn't overheat, but I don't know, it just runs a little warm for my liking. Especially with the AC on, which is nice, but idling up the road uh, climbs up, uh, gets close to 220, just idling. So, hopefully, that solves that. I'm gonna take her out in the morning, and uh, pretty sure we've got the fueling issues uh, figured out what was going on there. Well, I'll test my theory tomorrow and let you know how that goes. What a freaking gorgeous fall day we got here. This car is finally coming together. Just look at it out here. It's beautiful. Just flash another cow in. Just about done with fuel. Mass air sensor. That's what our culprit was. It was failing the math out. And reverting back to the VE table that's not tuned. That's super lean for this car. We're getting there now, boys.
idled her on back to the shack here. And uh, here's my last log, those three or four wide open poles I made. The worst sell is 3.3%. So uh, I applied this one to the math table already. Multiply by percent times half. That should skew everything just a fuzz rich right where we want to be. And uh, look at that coolant temp. Yeah, buddy. A lot better than 225. I cranked the air coming back and idled up the road. Um, it is a couple degrees cooler today, but nothing substantial. Uh, the last time I cranked the air up idling down the road, it was up to 225. Uh, idling a half mile. So that is much better. That makes me feel a lot better. Um, I did have to pull in for a rest here because the trans is up to like 216 and uh i don't know 220 i really don't like to beat on them after that so uh i'll tell the customer that they need to install an auxiliary trans cooler and uh they'll be good to go on this rig i'm going to take the wideband off at this point uh, my wideband has a hard time down at idle i think there's just not enough heat in the exhaust it's no matter how much fuel I pull, it's still showing uh, rich down here in the idle cells. So uh, I'll let the narrow bands clean that up. I'll do uh, long-term and short-term fuel trim math to uh, plot my graph on that. And I'll just take the idle areas and leave the, all the wideband stuff alone. So yeah, I think we're pretty much dialed here. This thing's a ripper. A lot better than the 150 horse that she showed up with. Very pleased. Figured I'd show you the math scale here. I got a nice linear curve going. You see at 11,000 on up, the math is maxed out. Uh, I had data logged right to 11,000 hertz on the limiter, so should be okay there. And if it stretches beyond, there should be enough fuel there, uh, at least to be in the safe range it's not going to hurt anything uh i'll just pull up the compare file here this is what the math curve that was in it uh when the car arrived so i'll switch back see how much fuel i added there i mean just a ton to make it happy uh the reason the math is maxed out is because that's a gen 3 uh truck math on there and just doesn't have the airflow through it that that LS3 needs. But all things considered, stock LS3, it'll get by with it. Yeah. pretty much gonna do her on the 69 just took her out and threw some timing at it now that I knew the fueling was good and this son of a bitch rips I'm not doing it any favors uh, she's awful filthy figured at least get a little bit of footage here of it out in the sunlight for you guys Get a better look at the interior here. And like I said before, they're fixing something in the door here when they dropped it off. So that needs to go back together yet. Yeah, it's full autometer cluster, vintage air. Whomever did the upholstery work on this car did a great job. Triple stitched everywhere, even in the console. The console extends into the back seat. Just a really nice suede headliner. The inlay that goes in here is suede. See on the passenger door there. Just all in all a really nice build.
that's going to pretty much wrap up the 69 Camaro. Uh, with any new build, you're going to have uh, some bugs to work out of it. When it arrived here, it had 194 miles on, and when it left tonight, uh, the odometer said 343. So that's totally uh, within reason. I didn't have too many problems, just had to track down what was going on and uh, process of elimination and get her figured out. If you're interested in purchasing this car, I'll put a link in the description uh, where it'll be available at. Thanks for watching, everybody, and we'll catch you on the next one. I didn't hear the rev limiter.